Alright, we're at the final part of Sly 2 Band of Thieves. So, we took in out all of the power engines on the blimp. Okay, so now there's only one thing we need to do before we can unleash our full flesh attack against Clockla. We need help from Carmelita, seeing as how, you know, her chopper is equipped with, you know, a, a, you know, a huge gun of sorts. Unfortunately, Carmelita is unable to track the blimp because it's not on her radar. So, it's up to Sly to uh, basically reactivate all these radio towers all over the blimp. And the only way to do that is uh, with this uh, massive uh, Mega Jump Pack that we have equipped. For the also, unfortunately, uh, this is the only time we will ever see the Mega Jump feature like ever again. For the most part, like <laughs> it's only used like ju for just this mission, and then once the mission is done, it's gone. So, ha so have fun, so have fun using the Mega Jump gadget while you can, because this is the only time you'll ever be able to. Well, you legitimately. Can't. Yeah, this, you, this is the only time you'll be able to use it legitimately. I? No, I, jump if, good. Me, if memory serves, I believe um, if you 100% this game on the PlayStation 2 version, um, and you start a new game, um, you can actually input a code which will allow you to actually reuse the Mega Jump gadget, like at the very start of the game. So, think of it as kind of like, um, New Game Plus, only you have to use a cheat code before you can even start. Sly can fly? No, jump good. <laughs> oh, but yeah, this, this is pretty much it. You just freaking go from one part of the blimp to the other. Like, pretty much reminiscent to that really tedious mission where you had to go around in a, in a barrel to get all these charges. Just to get at the final engine. But fortunately, you know, this isn't this doesn't take nearly as long because, you know, you can jump really high, and because you can get such height or whatever, if you gotta go from point A to point B, you can just jump really high and then use whatever air time that you have and use the paraglide to get at it. Uh, oh, I that like bitch. <laughs> Oh yeah, it, it's never really shown off. Like I didn't really show this off like while recording this, but you may have noticed like some uh, searchlights like coming out of like a clockless feet or whatever. Um, as it turns out, like um, if you get caught underneath those uh, searchlights that uh, Clockla sh uh, shows from her feet, um, it will unleash like quite a few amount of those like a uh, like a uh, robot droid, like a uh, drones or whatever. It's a good she. It's a good thing she doesn't see me just gliding all over her ship. Yeah, you. Yeah, you would think that. Um, even at this point, it's like even before we started. Um, like a you know, a de uh, taking down all of the engines. You would think that Clockwork would try to would have the advantage and would try to take us out. But no, she's just you know just flying around. You know. And that's oh, really hey, like a, and not for that, that's a missed opportunity here. I mean, it's like I know you know, yeah, fight her for a boss, but it's like yeah, you think she'd be more of like a hazard out here now. Yeah, yeah, you would think it's like yeah, it's like no, forget like unleashing a bunch of like a little about drones, you know, but you get under her searchlights or whatever. Just have Clocko like try to swoop. Oh my god, that would actually be really terrifying. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> here you are trying. Yeah, here you are trying to paraglide, and it's like, next thing you know, if she catches you, boom, she's swooping down for your ass. That would probably give me nightmares if that if if they actually implemented that. Because I already got, like, a bunch of scares or whatever from those, like, a bald eagles, you know, during, um, um, John Bisson's, uh, open world areas. But seeing Clockla do something of the sort, if not worse, around here, that would be terrifying. Yeah, but now it's like, she, yeah, but like you just look at her just flying around the place and you're just trying to dismantle her ship. She's like, okay, fine, I guess you can That's you can just do that. Chit -chat. All right, now for the final battle. Yeah. All, right, so, all right, so basically, much like a lot of these other mini games I've gone through earlier, just keep on shooting and keep, be mindful of how of how your gun of how your turret is looking because again if you abuse it too much it could overheat and it'll cool down a little bit now interesting uh yet very weird tidbit with this boss fight 
Um, for some reason, um, at this point of the recording is when some of the music decided to, well, not play at all. I mean, granted, you're not really missing much because, uh, unfortunately, with this boss battle, you would think they would change it up a little bit. But no, they still play the exact same tune as how you would normally hear if you're fighting off like a regular mook. So, hmm. yeah, you're not missing out on anything music-wise. So, I took it upon myself to try to put in a more fitting music, you know, for, an, for a boss battle. And Metallic Madness came to mind. Hey, it works! Hey, where did those energy beams came from? Oh, I set them off while gliding along your ship. Wait, you were what? How did I miss that? So, so yes, Clocklo was shoot like a like a various amount of projectiles from regular yellow missiles to like um, red missiles that take like at least two shots to take out to those little um those uh, electric rings that she shoots out, which was a which is actually a callback to one of the attacks that Clockwork used in the first game. Now, one thing you do need to be mindful of, um, at one point, a uh, Clockla will try to charge up for, like, a, 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 ver a, a huge super attack that she will use from, from her eyes. Now, um, if you let her charge up for far too long, she will be able to fire the attack, and there's no way to stop it. It's a guarantee, it was a guaranteed hit on you. So whenever you see Clockla's eyes glow like that, do, do whatever you can to shoot her in the face en enough so that way, you know, she won't be able to charge up the attack anymore. But yeah, that's phase one. Now for phase two. Now, don't worry, phase two is nothing to worry about. It's very easy, but, but as we get into phase two or whatever, it's like, I will say, um... It's like going on about the music or whatever. I I love this track right here. I'm coming, guys. Hold on. I guess I love Carmelita's one line of "You sh should have been a cop. Your your shot is terrific." It's like eh, compared to yours. <laughs> right. Oh no. Oh no. It's like I don't know. I think I think it's like I think out of all the tracks in this game, it's like. This is up there as as one of my favorite, if not like my most favorite track, because it's like this track right here, like um, it emphasizes on just how much per on how much in peril like everybody is in in this given situation, from Sly, you know, just like tr trying to like make his way through all this debris to get to Clockla, to um to Bentley and Murray like freaking out that Clockla has them in her clutches and they're thinking they're like something like the worst is going to happen. It's like it, it. It really fits the um, the uh, much a darker approach that they're going that they're gonna that this uh, whole situation is taken, especially compared to the Clockwork battle in uh, Slide One. The Murray needs to be. You might have a new body, Neela, but you're still the low-down, backstabbing coward we've beaten time and time again. This won't be any different. Be brave while you can. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the Murray who needs to pee. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, actually, that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> God. All right, but yeah, this is basically phase two. Um, yeah, you get uh, close enough to a clockless head and you whack whack her on both sides of the face, or I no, technically you're smashing her eyes. Now, occasionally she will shoot lasers out of her eyes, and um, two ways you can avoid the avoid those attacks: either a, you can try to jump over them if you're lucky enough, or you can do what I did and um, while her eyes are charging up, um, just get right on Clockless back, and it'll make a Clockless head like a point forward, and from there she'll have no choice but to fire the laser, you know, straight forward, therefore completely missing. But now for but now for phase three. So Sly's part of this entire fight is done. Now it's time to get at get this uh oh, thank you, Beverly. The hate ship that is within Clockless Mouth. So this will take this will acquire the talents of both uh Murray and Bentley. Let's make the bitch gag! Uh 
All right, so for, all right, so first, so first and foremost, it's like we gotta get over the blaze, and then lift up Clockless Mouth. Also, fun, very okay. I have a confession to make. Yeah. Um, so the lasers that are surrounding this entire area, um, I, I didn't think there was like any way to get rid of them or where they came from. But it wasn't until this recording that I realized, oh. Those lasers are coming out of those little like uh little wenches or whatever, um within clock clockless mouth, because it's like you basically gotta blow those up to get that hologram of Mila out of the way to get at the hate chip. So yeah, it wasn't until this point where I'm like, oh, that's where the lasers were. So, oh, oh god damn it. <laughs> Yes, and here I was thinking, oh, I just got, I just got to throw bonds at the hologram, and eventually she'll go away. No, no, you just got to get, you just got to destroy those two little winches or whatever. Boy. And then they'll get rid of the lasers. Oh, yep, we got the hate chip. Oh, here, here we go. Comes. Let's get out of here. She's about to explode. Ah, uh, and <laughs> and the yep, moment that they no. Yeah, the, the one moment, moment that nobody anticipated. Can't believe yeah, Bentley's fucking dead. I can't believe I can't. Yeah, I can't believe Sucker Punch actually implemented that, that kind of a scene in Slide Two. But yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it, everybody. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your guys' patience. I know it was a long one, and just kidding. That's obviously not what happened. But it might as well have. No, this is what really happened. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, here I was talking about how the music got really dark for the particular, um, fight or whatever, but it, it just, got, it just, it just got even worse. I can't walk! Come on, But, I mean, other than, yeah, other than that, it's like, putting that aside, that's pretty much it with the clockwork fight. Probably not like as big. It, it doesn't feel as big compared to when you fought Clockwork and Sly One. But I mean, there's still no, there's still no denying the dark tones that they took with um, with this entire scenario. Yet, despite the explosion, they remained pristine. It was as if nothing could ever hurt them. Carmelita cursed herself for showing up too late to get a few shots in on Clockla. So she took it out on what was close at hand. The hate chip. And just like that, it was over. Without that core piece, that Bitch. essential center of clockwork, there was nothing left. The parts aged before our eyes as if time had finally caught up with the ancient bird. How ironic that Carmelita, a police officer, would be the one to lift the curse from the Cooper family. The menace of clockwork would never again rise to threaten me or my children. See, police officers aren't that bad. Oh, and never mind. But one look at my gang told me that we were in no shape for a fast getaway. So I offered to go peacefully in exchange for letting my friends walk. They'd taken some bruises through all of this, but I was surprised, shocked really, to see them leave their gear behind as they walked away. Their wounds were deeper than I'd imagined. Those guys were hurting. Carmelita's old police unit soon arrived. With me in custody, her name was cleared, and she even got a well-deserved promotion. It was the least I could do. The ride to HQ started with us sitting in silence, trying to read each other's thoughts. As the reality of my capture started, <laughs> she began to relax, and we got to talking. Why? Right, remember the hand on the shoulder technique. Hey. Here comes the smolder. Then we started talking about God. well everything. All right, but 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 no, joking aside, is like th this was okay, Hard. like. This was the kind of moment that we like needed. We, we needed a heartwarming moment like this to to make up for exactly arrest. what just happened before Clockla exploded. When she realized that our <laughs> yeah. short across town had already taken two hours. A fact I kind of clued into after seeing the Eiffel Tower float by 17 times. She went forward to ask the pilot what was up, and it looked like my pals had left going away present before taking off. I'm taking, I'm, taking, I'm taking the wine with me. 
<laughs> it's like, I need all the bottles! Cool bottle! <laughs> oh, I finally had the last cool one! <laughs> oh, man. Well, that, I also like to point out, like, the very nice tidbit they did, where they actually animated, like, lip sync with the 2D flash animation. That was the first instance we ever saw that in any any of the Sly games. So I first see that and I'm like, okay, that's actually pretty neat. <laughs> Sly cartoon win. Uh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, I remember when they were hinting at a TV show for Sly Cooper instead of a movie. Yeah, first yeah. it was a movie, then it was a show. It's just, yeah, for whatever reason, it's just the universe does not want Sly to come back. Oh no, a lot of people want Sly to come back. It's just they're just not having it for whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, while we're going through the casting, for, through the line of cast or whatever, what are the what are our people doing now after this whole shtick with Clockla? Well, apparently she got her drink back. <laughs> oh, also, this is also that's not canon. That's not canon. Nice Dimitri, get up, loser. Dim Dimitri was Dimitri did not do anything of the sort. He is now in prison in freaking Italy. <laughs> Oh. I think I yeah, I dropped my sounds actually Oh, uh Danny? Um Wait, is that just me or it's like no, uh I heard that too. Oh. Okay. Oh no, Danny's to come Clockla! Behold! Clockla is born! Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Set aside your hatred. Oh, I love this. All right, that's it. You've seen everything you want. Go outside. <laughs> You've been sitting here and play. You, you, you went through this game throughout one sitting. God. Go outside, you fucking nerd. <laughs> All right, the pl the let's play is done. You've seen everything. Go outside. <laughs> yeah, leave the let's play. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> You put. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Well, so, all right. Well, something was probably going on on Danny's end, I, I guess. Like, for some. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. I'm actually curious to see how that picks up from Craig. But, um, yeah. I mean, other than that, that's that will pretty much do it for Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Ooh, man. Oh man. It's like. What a sequel. I mean. To come from Sly 1, which was basically just like your typical PlayStation platformer, to this game, where it took what it used previously and then improved on it and essentially made like Sly Cooper, like mechanically wise, like its own entity. So it's not feeling like, you know, you're playing any other platform you've ever seen, like like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro and, you know, all, all, all those other memorable classics. So, but, yeah, but I mean, it's like, you know, for Sly 2, it's like, what what do you guys think? What do you guys think of Sly 2? Uh, Danny, I'll let you go first. Wait, what's going on? I had to restart uh, Discord. F final thoughts. Uh, big improvement from the first game. Best is still to come. That's what I have to say. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. You're so... Yeah, you're so I, I, like, I, Sly 3 is the better game. I personally like Sly 3 the most. That was the one that I had the most fun with. But it's like, you know... He, for, but as far as this one goes, huge improvements off the first game. It's just, you know, better, you know, better story, better gameplay, you know... I just, I just, I mean, so yes, I, I get that a lot of people really like this one the most, and I can certainly see why, 
I just feel like when you eventually do get to Sly 3, and that's probably when I can really start talking about it, where it's like, Sly 3 just kind of takes everything best about this game and just massively improves on it. So, I mean, it's like, this, to me, like, you know, the first game was all right. This was the one I think that really, really made me like playing the Sly games. Oh, 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 yeah, de oh, yeah, definitely. It's like, yeah, it's like compared to like a Sly One, it's like everything that they did with Sly Two, like mechanically wise, it made it seem like you know, like Sly Cooper was his own entity and not just some random uh, character that's supposed to be yet another generic platform. Yeah. It's like, what, what, Brian? Like, what, what do, you, what do you, what did you think of Sly Two? I mean, I'm on the same boat with Danny where I do think that Sly 3 is the better game, but I personally think Sly 2 is held in such high regards because it was this game that would help set the foundation for what Sly ends up actually becoming. Because, like, yeah, the first game played not anything much like how the second game did, and once the second game actually made its formula down... That's what the, that's what the series started going by now, just because it was a formula that worked so well. And funny enough, this is mostly me playing through the Reignited trilogy for Spyro again. But I'm actually, it's actually kind of funny when you think about how many of Sony's where, products like, have actually just they, done that. Like they start out okay, but then you get to the second one, and it's just like boom. That's when they got the formula down. Y yeah, like that's when they set the foundation. Like Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. That's where they set the foundation down for like the rest of the following games, like Year of the Dragon and Game That Shall Not Be Named went down. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. It's like, oh yeah, we have like these level to level things here and there. But then, sl then uh, Crash 2 came around, introduced the warp room stuff and power crystals. That started becoming the formula. Hell, even jack and daxter like the first the first game and the second game are so drastically different from each other but the rest of the games afterwards followed what the formula that jack 2 pretty much stated and sly here is definitely no different yeah that i mean that's actually a really good point i i i mean i think it's safe to say i think i think you someone could make the same argument for like say halo for instance like, 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 I mean, it's like for Halo Combat Evolved, it's like, yeah, they pretty much, they had something going on, like, as a first-person shooter, but then you get to Halo 2, and then, yeah, that's where they really start to, um, implement, like, a new, like, the new foundation for the series, and then, and they just, imp they just added more to it as the series went on. Yeah, so, yeah, it's always really interesting to see that kind of thing, and, I guess you could also say the same thing for like something like Smash Brothers Melee. Cause like, yeah, 64 started everything, but then Melee laid down the foundation for the rest of the games to come in. But yeah, that's something I feel Sly 2 definitely deserves to praise for because without it, I don't think that without it, we would not have had this solid formula that the series has been going down. Oh yeah, on top of like the, like the more memorable, like, like the vast, the, the, uh, the vast, like, bigger amount of memorable moments that Sly 2 has to offer compared to Sly 1. Like, with, like, the missions you have to go on to, the new cast of characters, like, like, all of Clock, like, all of the Claw Gang is just so entertaining to, to witness time and time again. It's, it's just great. And heck, even, like, see, even see, like, Murray develop as a character like compared to how he was in Sly One, that that's all that's always a treat. And oh yeah, yeah. Overall, it's like yeah, they did so they improved on what their initial intent was, you know, with Sly One, and they just added more to it. And it's all done so well. I, 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 I cannot get enough of it. I really can. Hashtag to meet you, best Sly bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's, it's like I, I'm. T it's like I'm telling you. It's like it's like they completely retconned the whole shtick when Dimitri was not a dance instructor for a retirement cruise. He is still somewhere. He is now in prison in Italy. He, he's he's still no. under Carmelita's custody. No, listen, like, he, he decided to go on Dancing on the Cruise for one minute, and then he got himself arrested on the cruise because he bumped somebody off the, off the ship. Oh, no. 
<laughs> no. Oh, God. All right. Now, before I end this off here, I want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for sticking around throughout this whole thing. I mean, no joke, guys. Ending this playthrough has been a long time coming. And the fact that even now, quite a few of you have been very supportive and very patient with me on this. Oh, man. Like, it means a whole lot to me. Like, I I'm not over-exaggerating when I say that. Like, you guys are awesome, and I appreciate every single one of you. So, with that being said... As always, thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next playthrough, hopefully without any more interruptions. Good night everybody!